Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship here. For, you're good, girls. You don't have to like ladies. You don't have to like sprint by. Um, welcome to worship here at First Presbyterian Church. Pleasure to have you all here in worship with us today, Stacy. Um, <laughs> special welcome to any visitors and uh, those joining us online. Glenn, it's peaches. That's what we're supposed to bring this month, peaches. So since you asked me specifically, I, it's okay. You got time. Uh, we're looking for peaches this month to put in the food boxes come uh, Christmas time. So it is peaches. Um, we're already advertising because it is April. The last day of Sunday school is April 28th. Um, and then April 30th is the last connection. So uh, I don't know how any of that happened um, at all. So, Barb does have some sign-up sheets, or you just have one? Just the breakfast potluck? So, we're doing a breakfast potluck, uh, we're doing our, our quarterly meal, and we thought, let's do breakfast. So, because uh, everybody loves breakfast, for the most part, I think. Um, so, there'll be a sign-up sheet, I think it has some stuff to, if you would like to sign up to bring, um, or to help prepare, or um, anything like that on there. Uh, we're going to provide, the church is going to provide pancakes and bacon, but with that, we need people to make said pancakes and bacon. And we're going to do this real smart. We're going to make it during church. So, of course, obviously it's hot. Uh, but the problem is I'm going to have to preach a real quick sermon because if y'all are smelling bacon, I've lost you completely. So <laughs> with the fellowship hall right below us, don't worry, 28th will be a short sermon. Um, we still do need volunteers for liturgist, coffee fellowship, door greeter, and technical, as always. And then I will, uh, VBS is coming up. We already have quite a few registered, but, you know, we need volunteers. That's what we, more volunteers is always needed. Um, so, volunteers, and if you haven't got your kids signed up, get them signed up, because it's going to be fun, like it always is. And then as you can see on the back here, there's another, there was an email that went out, right? Not, not yet. There is an email that will go out. Um, and if you're looking for a way to support the mission trip, another way, if you haven't already or you want to, um, you can go on to, is it group or youth works? Yeah, what company are we going with, though? I can't remember. Group, thank you. That's what I was asking. Well, just um, group, group mission, um, pro, who we're going to, uh, they have these t-shirts, sweatshirts, all these things for sale, and we get proceeds of that. So you go in, there's a, there's a, there'll be a link, go to it, it's our store, so anything you buy, we get $10 of the purchase. So it would go to paying for our mission trip that we're doing. So it'd be fundraising for this specific mission trip and the cost. So please go support, they got some great looking shirts, sweatshirts, all that stuff. Um, is there any other announcements? Suzanne, any other? We're good up there. All right, seeing no more. This is the day the Lord has made.
Morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Peace be with you. How good and pleasant it is when we live together in unity. Receive the Holy Spirit. It is like precious oil on the head, the blessing of the Lord. Please stand in body or spirit for the opening, immortal, invisible, God only wise. Number 12 in the red hymnal, or you can follow along in the screen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful, and we just forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness, trusting in God's mercy, mercy let us confess our sins first silently, then collectively. And praying together, you have shown yourself to us, O oh God, by word and spirit, with signs and wonders, in flesh and blood. Yet we still struggle to live and believe the good news of Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us, forgive us, enter into our lives, and cast out our fear so that we may come to trust in you and have life in Jesus' name. Amen. We have an advocate with God, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One, who offered his life in love to save the world from sin. This is the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Since God... Oops. <laughs> Father, and to the as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you.
Oh, perfect. Are there any other young disciples? Okay, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Perfect. All right. Emma's got the right idea. We've got change for change, but we've got a little thing to do first. Do you, whoop, do you see my friend Carissa here? Clarissa right here with a big box? Okay, so what you've got are there are some things inside the box. Well, oh, just hold on a minute. There might be some idea. There's some things here. So in the front, there's an X. You're going to each take a turn to reach in and see if you can feel anything inside the box. Do not pull anything out. Just reach in and feel, and then you're going to work. It's not alive, I promise. There's nothing alive in there. If there's a grasshopper, that means there was a grasshopper in my house, and I'm not a fan of that, so we'll figure that out. But reach in, and then after everyone gets a chance to reach in and feel, we're going to try to figure out together what's inside. So, Kaz, would you like to go? You don't have to. Okay. Lucy, do you want to go? Perfect. Right. Reach in. Graham, you can go with her because you'll be next. Reach your hand in. It's not a trick, I promise. Right here. Stick your hand in. See if you can feel anything inside. Can you feel anything inside? Yeah. Okay. Now it's Graham's turn. Okay. Emma, you're next. Cal, do you want to go with her? You can, like, Lucy and Graham. Okay. Maybe it's a stuffed animal. Maybe. What do you think, Graham and Lucy? What did you feel? Uh, Maybe a sock. Maybe a sock. Lucy, what did you feel? A sock. It feels like bread. Okay, did Emma get a chance? All right, Emma, you you didn't want to? Okay, Joa and Victor, you're next. Go ahead, Joa. Victor will be behind you. Reach in. Don't pull anything out. Just see if you can feel stuff. What did you feel? You don't know? Okay, Paisley, you're next. Perez, you can all go together, all three of you. Yep. Emma, what did you feel? There's definitely stuff inside there. What about you, Victor? What did you feel? A rock. Okay. I don't know how many things could be in there. What did you feel? I Say it again. Teddy bear. It feels like a teddy bear. Breaks in and slate. Do you want to take a turn? No? Slate? I think I felt a sock. It felt a sock. Evie's going. Hazel, Farah, Brixton, Bristol. Do you want to take a feel? No? Okay. So we've heard a rock, a teddy bear, socks, bread. Anything else? You think it's a teddy bear? Multiple socks wrapped up. Anybody else want to go before we open it? Yeah, Palmer. Oh, so- socks are tucked in. Claire, so you want to bring the box up? Perfect. Thank you. All right, ready? Let's see. Watch your face. Quick, careful. Oh, look, socks. Good job. Oh, there was bread. Good job. What else was in here? A can. A can of what? No one sells Peaches. Peaches. And what's that? It looks like a flashlight. It is a flashlight. What in the world? Why would I have a flashlight, a can of peaches, a loaf of bread, and a pair of socks in a box? You would just feel it. You would just feel it? Why do you think it's there? I don't know. You just put it in. I just put it in randomly? Oh, what? Okay, so we got bread up here. Perfect. Good job. What else do we have? Maybe that's from peaches. You said we were going to bring peaches. Yep, we're collecting peaches. Good job. What do we do with our buckets this month? We're taking up change, and we're doing it for socks. To give give people clean socks. And then why the flashlight? Uh, Yeah, don't try to. see a light? Yeah, who's the light of the world? Jesus. Jesus. So in today's. The bread is his what? Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Good job, Callum. So, oh, let's leave it in the box. So, we have all these things because in today's Bible story, yep. Give me a second. I like bread, socks. Yep. 
In today's Bible story, it talks about tasting and seeing and feeling, and that's how we live our faith through all those things. The bread's hard. Marty made it a few days ago. It's been in the box for a while. So, perfect. It is. So we're going to collect some change as another way to taste and see and feel God's goodness. So take your buckets and go grab some change. Does anybody still have change? Oh, there's some up this way and some in the back. Dempsey, right over there, too, on the other side. Raise your hand if you still have money to collect. All right, friends with buckets, start coming this way to where all the hands are raised. Slayton, go on this side so you can get that one, please. Whoa, good job. Thank you. Good job. We're going to dump it in Hazel's bucket, okay? Dump it in. Okay. Kaz, will you help me collect the empty buckets? Perfect. Thank you. Okay. I'll take the buckets. Come back this way. Perfect, Joa. Good job, Lucy. Thank you. All right, good job. All right, let's pray. Oh, yep, put it all the change in here. Woo. Good job. Yep, I'll take the empty buckets. Daily got an empty bucket, too. Yep, all right. Right here. All right, put it in. Good. Oh, perfect. Put it in. Right here, Graham, can you put it in this bucket? Yep. Okay, here, I'll take this one. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, drop it in quick. We got to pray. Your sermon's not too long. Great. All right. All right, friends. Good job collecting money and touching the things. We're... The, you know what? That's a good question. I forgot I'm downstairs. I'll see what I can find. All right, let's pray. Thanking God for the ability to taste and touch and see all the good things he gives us. Are you ready to repeat after me? All right. Dear God, thank you for today, for bread to taste, for peaches to collect, for change to change lives. Help us. Help us. Love you. Love you. Each and every day. Each and every day. Amen. Amen. All right. Our scripture today comes from 1 John, chapter 1, verse 1 through chapter 2, verse 2. It can be found on the, bullet, on the screen, on the front of your bulletin, or in a pew Bible if you'd like to follow along there. Let us be attentive to a word from the Apostle. We declare to you what was from the beginning... What we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, and what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. 
this life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you may also have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of our Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of all our hearts here today, Be holy and acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As we continue on through the Easter season and head towards Pentecost, one thing is very clear on this Low Sunday. Yes, this is literally called Low Sunday. Um, It has nothing to do with the attendance dip after Easter. It's it's what they called the second Sunday of the Easter festival was low Sunday, because it was the second one. On this low Sunday, our faith is about community. Our faith is about being a gathered body. It's about coming together as a common, as a people with a commonality found in who we worship, that is Jesus. And who last week we celebrated an empty tomb, a resurrection, And we claimed and we say and we do it boldly because our truth is that he is risen. It's a season, people, not a day. He is risen. There we go. Excellent. We come together with that common bond, with a risen Savior. It is not necessary, in my opinion, and it makes us better if we don't all agree on every little intricate detail of everything that happens or everything that we believe or everything that we anyhow we don't have to agree all the way down the metric makes us better now I know that's contrary to the way the world works because if we look at the world right now that's just not how it works right because those who have opposite political views or a different part of a political party or whatever in our broken two-party system are fill in the blank, right? I I don't know. You can just fill in the insult, the name, the demonization that a Republican gives to a Democrat and a Democrat gives to a Republican, right? That and they're out to get you, whichever one you are. The other one's out to get you, right? Insert maniacal laugh. (laughs) The Democrats are coming for this and the Republicans are coming for that. (laughs) Ha, ha, ha. Going to kill us all, either way. Or those with different races, creeds, religions. We can't associate, be around, be in community. It's not true. It's not true. See, because very well next to you in the pews, there may be someone of a different political belief system. But they share the commonality of Jesus Christ with you. They're here worshiping the same God. They're here leaning into the resurrection and the belief in the forgiveness of sins 
and the hope of life eternal and the hope of a better world here and now based on their belief in Jesus Christ. Especially here, especially here in this faith community, in any faith community, as we gather around the risen Lord to take part in the new life that is ordered, that new life that starts first, as he says, between us and then us and God and us and him. That's what John says. Now that we're part of this, we have community and communion and fellowship, specifically fellowship, with one another and with God and Christ. So we celebrate this day, the risen Lord, as a community of combined believers. As people who are different, but yet stand firm in the truth that Jesus Christ is risen. He is not there. He is not in that tomb. Jesus, John puts forth the desire for community in Christ here in this letter, this sermon. Depends on how you look at it. It could have been a written down sermon. He declares what was from the beginning. He attests to what was there at the beginning of it all that is the light of Christ. The light that Jesus was there in the creative moments from the beginning. But then he declares what they have seen, what they have heard, and what they have touched. What the life has revealed, and they testify to it. We're going to get to the testify part in a bit. To eternal life, so that we may have fellowship. And the joy is complete. And then he goes into how we can possibly have fellowship. Because God is light. There is no darkness in him. And those who willfully choose to walk in the darkness are not part. And then those who willfully say that they have no sin. Right? That was a part of the scripture that I could look up to because it's actually a, called a confession. If we say that we have no sin, the truth is not in us, and we deceive ourselves. But if we confess our sins, God, who is just and, right, and, just and faithful, will cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And he says, I am writing these things so that you may not sin. But if you do, but if you do, you have an advocate. You have one in Jesus Christ who has been the atoning sacrifice, not just for our sins, but for the sins of the world. I was part of a conversation the other day in a group that essentially said that we are not good at evangelizing. We're not. Who's going to go out and be like, hey, let me tell you. Cindy's over here like, mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> we're not great at it. Some of us are. Carly Cremines. Whoo. Back, I don't know, I don't know if she is now, but back in the day she was real good at it. We had this realization, we had this conversation that we're just not great at it. But here's the thing, we talk about evangelism and it scares us, right? That's a, ooh, oh, I gotta, what do I gotta do? I gotta go hand out tracts? Please don't do that. That doesn't help. That's just trying to get someone to convert. That's not. John says he testifies. He shares testimony to the truth, to what he has seen, touched, and heard. Sounds familiar, right? The, the, Seen, touched, heard part is, echoes the gospel story today, which is Thomas. You know, they, Jesus appears to them in the room, the locked doors, and they freak out. And he says, it's me, look. Here are my wounds. Here's the one on my side. He shows them too. Don't, don't give Thomas the back end of the stick here. They all get a look at it. Thomas is jealous at the end of the day when he comes home. Thomas says, when I see, when I touch, and when I hear him, I'll believe. Well, we testify to what we have seen, felt, heard, and been part of. But we have to testify to it. That's what John's doing. We have to go speak the truth of what we know and who Jesus is. Who Jesus is to us. What Jesus means to us. What we have seen and touched and heard and been part of. My realization was that why don't we want to talk about that? Why don't we want to testify? If y'all are here, 
this day, Jesus means something to you. Right? Can I get some head nods, please? Thank you, Matt. I appreciate that. In some way, Jesus, your faith in him, has impacted your life. You have seen, you have touched, you have heard. You have something, we have something to testify to, correct? An experience, a feeling, some sort of deep inner peace that we just know. Why do we keep that hidden away? Jesus says no one lights a candle and puts it under a basket. It can't light a room up. It'll burn the house down beyond that. But why do we hide the light? Why are, we, why are we unwilling in so many ways to testify? Why are we so afraid to invite a friend? That's all it takes. An invitation. We have the opportunity to speak of personal knowledge. I, again, am not telling you to make every conversation you have in this world every day about Jesus. Not saying that. I don't do that, and I'm the paid Christian here. But... When we have the opportunity, the moment to speak our truth, whether it is in front of this body, where if one of you says, I want to speak my truth, the way Jesus has impacted me and my life, you know what I'm going to do? There you go. Do it. Because I want to hear it too. John says we testify to what we need. We, we have experienced in Christ. Here's the thing that came up in that conversation. You know who is not bad or not scared to do this? Youth group. <laughs> Where's Liam? Mr. Inviter Man. There he is. The king of the invitation. I don't know how you did it, Liam, but I think it's going to go a little something like this. Hey, guys. How's it going? I do this really cool thing on Wednesday nights. You guys want to come hang out with me? Yeah, it's about Jesus, but it's pretty fun. Is that roughly in Liam speak? Did I nail it? I nailed it. There we go. Did it break you? Did, did, you, did you fall down and cry, freaking out about it? No, because, because you want your friends, the people you love, the people you like, A, to be part of it, and B, to know that same peace, joy, love, hope, grace that you know. Why? I've shared this story before. Penn of Penn and Teller, the magicians, you know, is a staunch atheist. I mean, big time. He's the one that talks. He's the chubby one that talks. But he says, why not tell me about Jesus? If you are faithful and you love me, that's what your God tells you to do. It ain't going to change me because I've made up my mind. But why not share it with me? Because you know what it tells me? That you care about me. Hmm. The staunch atheist just put me in my place. If I care, if I love someone, why not want them to be part of this? Why not want them to be at this table with me? To be able then to, for them to testify and speak and have that same feeling of truth and hope and to know that they can try and fail and continue on another day. That's what an honest community is about. To build the fellowship. To bring in the people so they know as well the youth group, I have seen it. They come, they've built this community on Wednesday nights that in some nights puts me at awe. Recently, we've been like, you know, we have game nights and stuff like that. And we're like, what do you guys want to do? We'll get done with the lesson or, or the mission activity. And we're like, you guys want to play a game or you guys like want to get crazy? Like, no, I think we just want to hang out, talk. Y'all like... No phones. You just want to hang out and talk? Huh. You don't need to be crazy and wild, teenager? Oh, no, you just want to have community. 
You just want to fellowship with one another. You just want to hang out and talk. <laughs> with no phones. Y'all, this generation ain't so bad. <laughs> they blow my mind on a regular basis when things like that happen. Growth happens, and I've seen it, as they invite their friends they, they love because they have fun, they experience spiritual depth, they, their faith grows, and they want to go tell others and invite them because it means something to them. Does it mean something to us? Don't we want those we love, like, can stand right here with us? I think so. Because we, in my opinion, I think, I want those who have to experience that same fellowship and joy. And I know, because we think, oh, we're broken and we're flawed and, and we struggle and people say, oh, it's just a place full of hypocrites and, hypocrites and yeah, there's room for one more, two more, four more. We're not. So our problem is, yes, we sin. He does it, right? He writes this letter so that we don't sin, but guess what? We do sin. And that's not where it ends. We tell the truth about how we fall short, and we tell the truth to one another and to others how we fall short, because we have an advocate. See, the letter ends with the hope that we have an advocate. That as we stumble and we paw and we climb and then we fall back down the mountain and we screw up again and again and again and we keep trying, that we have an advocate. That we have a risen Lord who has given of himself so that all sins are forgiven. So we can do this thing. So we can try and build the fellowship. And we are responsible for building the fellowship. To giving that hope. I guess I end with, why not? Amen. Amen. Having heard the word read and proclaimed, let us stand in body and or in spirit to see, to say what it is we believe, to testify to what it is we believe. Saying together, I believe. You may be seated. As we come to this time of offering, we give back what we've been blessed with. We return it with gratitude and thanksgiving that it is used to further the kingdom here and now. We do not give out of our abundance, but out of a rich and deep faith.
Let us pray. Holy God, we're truly grateful for the gifts that have been given this day. We pray that they're used to further your kingdom here and now. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. My brothers, sisters, you are invited to this feast of divine fellowship where we experience God, Jesus, and the Spirit, and we fellowship with one another. Where at this table, as bread is broken and cup is poured out, we experience the fellowship of sacrifice and new life. We experience the fellowship of eternity. So come, come to this table, because you're not just invited, you're called. You're wanted. So come. Come to this table. Well, if it, hopefully it's the third time in two weeks that you've come to this table. Should be fat and sassy by now. Filled with the Spirit, right? Come. Come to this table because this meal never gets old. This fellowship never grows stale. Because newness is found over and over again, each time the bread is broken and the cup is poured out, brothers and sisters, come. Come experience the divine and come experience fellowship with one another at this table. I remind you all this is not my table. This is not this church's table. This is not a Presbyterian table. This is the feast of our Lord. And if you hunger and you thirst to know our Lord more and more, come. Come to this table. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and good, O God, to give you all thanks and praise. To start each day, each moment with gratitude. With gratitude and thankfulness to who you are and who we know you to be. So we are grateful. We are grateful for how you created each of us. How you breathed life into us. Your breath breathed into us. How you formed us, how you have made us this community, and you continue to bring more and more. Lord, we are grateful for your creation, for the ways we experience and can testify to who you are, the way we experience your grace and mercy in creation. So together with your whole church and all the company in heaven, we worship and adore your glorious name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O oh God, we are grateful for your Son, our risen Lord. We're grateful for his life, death, and resurrection a life born as one of us, in full communion like us, to know the depths, the heights, to know the pains and the sorrows, but yet the joys and triumphs of being just like one of us in this creation, in this place. To know what it is and to advocate advocate for us. We're grateful for a life that is an example of how to live, how to lean into grace and mercy, how to be those who forgive and offer a new life, to be those who are people, who are resurrection people. Oh God, we're grateful for the death, an atoning sacrifice that the sins of not just us, but of the world have been forgiven. And a resurrection, a promise that truly new life can be found. 
in this time and place and well beyond it, eternal life found in you. O God, together we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And O God, we're grateful for that spirit, the breath that you breathed in a, into each of us, the one that dwells in us, that pushes us, guides us, moves us, teaches us, forces us to continue to seek to be the people you call us to be. We pray that spirit is over these simple gifts of bread and cup, that as they are broken and poured out, they are signs and symbols of your body broken and your blood shed for us. We pray all this in the name of Christ who stands with us this day and every day, teaching us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night our Lord was betrayed, he took bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, saying, This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, after dinner, he took the cup, and after pouring it out, he said, This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Do this also in remembrance of me. The Apostle Paul tells us each time we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord until he comes again. And come again he shall. Today we'll be taking communion or partaking in communion, traditional. So the plates will be passed, pass them to your neighbor. We will, uh, I know I'm call, I called an audible last time we did this. So we will hold both elements and take them as an entire body together. So we'll hold the body of Christ partake of the body of Christ, do so with the cup as well.
served. Let us join together in prayer. Praying together, Holy God, giver of wine and bread, send us from your table confidence that we are your own children, born of your spirit, fed at your table, filled with your grace, sent to speak your truth and offer your love to the world, Christ's name. Join in singing hymn 319. Brothers and sisters, go from this place to testify. To testify to what you, is, you know is true. That He is risen, He is risen indeed, and that you have experienced His grace, truth, and love in your life. Do not be afraid to share it with the world. As you go from here, may you go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit this day and forevermore. Amen.